All right, if you have not purchased a Powerball ticket just yet, you still have some time before tonight's massive gargantuan drawing. That will give you a tiny opportunity to become a billionaire. The grand price is up to $1.9 billion. It's the largest jackpot in lottery history. But the odds of winning it, as I said, are very slim. So slim, it's one in 292 million. If you do happen to match all six numbers and choose to take the cash option, you would walk away with just a tiny $929 million before taxes. With, but with the fun that is part of enjoying playing the lottery, there are also very real dangers for some people. That's right. Let's bring in Keith White now. He is the executive director of the National Council on Problem Gambling. Keith, welcome. I'll tell you that, you know, we always do these stories. The lottery is getting so big. That ropes me into it. I just tried to purchase a lottery ticket in our building. He and, just tried. And yeah. it's cash only, which <laughs> I didn't realize. But there's a good reason I understand for that. Talk to us about, despite lottery promotions coming with warnings for those with gambling addictions, that there is a triggering component that this um, coverage and this type of jackpot can have for folks. Yeah, Lilia and Errol, thank you so much for having me. We know that uh, for people who have a gambling problem or people who may be at risk for a gambling problem, advertising and promotion can exacerbate or a problem or trigger relapse. So it's really important to note uh, when you're even buying that, that casual ticket that for some people it can be a lifetime uh, or devastating addiction to, to gambling itself. You know, I'm curious, uh, when I think of an addiction to gambling, you know, I think of casinos, I think of, you know, apps, I think of mm -hmm. online, of other ways, not necessarily the lotto, but yeah, when you're talking constantly and hearing about a 1.9 billion uh, jackpot, I, I do assume that that's a big trigger. But what concerns do you have for people who are playing the lotto for the first time, uh, who are hoping to jump into the action of cashing in this giant jackpot? Is there a concern that, you know, you might discover with the lotto that you have a gambling problem? There, is, there are several concerns. One is that, of course, uh, lottery is a form of gambling. And so just like any other form of gambling, it can be addictive. And because m most Americans don't, nece don't necessarily think of lotteries as gambling. So the first thing is to know that if you're playing the lottery, even if it's just a ticket, you may be at risk for developing a problem. Now that risk for lottery players is generally low, but the risk will increase with the greater frequency and the greater amount of spend you have. So, you know, a ticket, one ticket may not be very harmful, but if you find yourself buying dozens or hundreds of tickets mm -hmm. and not just once a year, but once a month or once a week or even daily, that starts to increase your risk. And as with other forms of gambling, the reasons why you gamble are very, very important. So if you're gambling for mm -hmm. recreation, if Errol's just buying a ticket here and there, that's a low risk activity. If you're gambling to get money to pay the rent, if you're gambling to relieve mm -hmm. feelings of stress and depression and anxiety, those are things that are obviously linked with higher rates of gambling problems. Yeah, it's not a saving strategy. Because no, some no, folks it's... really do spend a lot of money they have yeah. on a bunch of tickets just in case. Meanwhile, yeah. that's money they could have put in a high yield savings right. account. This is not places. high yields at all, and this is not high odds at all exactly. that you're going to get it. This is just the wrong right. type of gambling. So <laughs> what, what's the advice you would give to folks um, for preventing that addiction to gambling or lottery games or, you know, or sports betting is another popular one folks can do from um, the touch of their, their phone screen. So what advice would you give? It's a, it's a great question. And really one of the main things we stress is for any form of gambling uh, to set a limit and stick to it. And that's a limit of time and money spent gambling. Uh, make sure you know the warning signs of gambling addiction. So those are things like preoccupation, loss of control, and of course, financial harm to you or your family. Uh, so it, with all those things, it's really important if you do recognize the warning signs of addiction to know that there's hope and help available. This is not just a one-way street. And for many addicts, not just gambling addicts, but all kinds of addicts, they feel that that narrowing of options and they feel like they don't have anywhere else to turn except to do more and more of the same thing that got them into trouble because that may be the only time that they feel good. When they're dreaming about that huge jackpot, they can uh, drown out some of the other stressors or some of the risk, risks in their life. And so people use, uh, can use gambling as a sort of a maladaptive coping mechanism. Well, no, that addiction of gambling and any other one is a disease, and that means that there's help out there. That's Keith right. White, thank you so much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you very much.